Hey, and welcome to another KSP2 video where we're recreating the Apollo 11, and that requires a Saturn V. Before you is the footage of me building said Saturn V rocket, starting all the way at the top of the stack. At first, I wanted to place the parachute somewhere inside the launch escape cone, but it would just block the docking port that we need to transfer a crew between service module and our lunar lander. We got the service module pretty much ready at this point, but I did some actual engineering work and tested the launch escape system, and that's why you saw me play with action groups and the separator. I also decided to start a clip in a small monopropellant tank just in case we may need it. Now that the SM is complete, we can move on to the lander, and at first I thought it's going to be a significant challenge, but I looked at it from a different perspective and got it done pretty easily. I've attached the donut tank and a spark engine right to the lander can, and somehow I didn't know it's not nearly enough fuel to get us back into lunar or, in this case I guess, lunar orbit, so we ended up just taking the whole lander back into space. Okay, so you guys know how the original Apollo lander has had the, the golden structure around the engine, right? So I've tried to get it at least somewhat right, considering we're working with limited parts available. I think it does look a bit similar at the end, despite the color not being as accurate as I'd like. I was just more focused on the shape and how useful it is going to be for, let's say, landing legs. I know these fuel tanks probably gave you chills right about 5 seconds ago, but just roll with it for now. It is going to be covered up the whole way and that fuel ended up saving our whole mission when we were left with plenty of Delta V after docking back with the service module. In the meantime, our lander has received a significant update, or, or rather two updates, namely the engine and landing legs, which, and this is of course on me, are a tiny bit too short as compared to the nozzle extension, and we ended up just landing on that very same nozzle, and the vehicle has almost tipped over. It is uh, as good time as any to tell you why I went for the Apollo 11 mission now. I decided to take part in KSP's Twitter weekly challenge where you're given one general challenge split into multiple categories of difficulty. Some would say I should, should have gone for the most difficult one, but I guess I just like recreating stuff and the Apollo 11 will also be fitting since the mission patch says Apollo on it. At this point in the build, our stack has been tested off camera once again to see if the coupling works fine. The results were kind of 50-50 situation as indeed it all worked in orbit as intended, but then after getting back to the VEB, the whole project was stuck in the ground, and pretty much only the capsule was visible, and when grabbed, it, was it would just pop right off the stack, even though it is my assembly anchor. What I did to fix it is I basically reverted back to launch, then to VEB, then restarted my game, and, and when that didn't work, I copied my craft files to the desktop, deleted the whole save, created a new campaign, and put the craft files back in. Guess what? That did absolutely nothing. I then clicked launch and recovered the vessel, and it was fine. Such an annoying glitch, though. I wouldn't want to have to build an entire ship again just because its position is all messed up. Thankfully, I was able to get back to work after that unplanned standstill. As I went on a short run, we are nearing the end of the build time lapse, and our Saturn V actually resembles the real one. I'm not a huge fan of the aft sort of engines adapters, and I think the making history parts in KSP1 were much better than what I managed to do here. But all that's left to do is to add some more or less vital components, including engines, four aft fins, and a missed interstage decoupler and we are at last able to color our craft so that it looks at least somewhat like the real life counterpart. Ah, we also need to address the elephant in the VAB, aka gigantic mess that some people call staging. I cannot tell you why it got as bad as it did. Now, always remember to strut your rockets together unless you wanna end up like I did, trying to launch without those. Let's say it got wobbly before I could even zoom out the camera. I went with the classic color scheme at the end of the build. Anyway, it is the time. Time to launch. Let's go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Ignition and liftoff of the Apollo 11 aboard Saturn V on its way to the moon on a quest to complete this long-awaited challenge. 
I gotta tell you, it was an amazing rocket to fly in this video. It was responsive the way it should have been, it has never lost control on me and I only needed one try. I even forgot to quick save a couple of times during the ascent. Somehow this build was a pleasure to fly. If you want to try for yourself, let me know down in the comments if you would like to get my craft file, but I strongly suggest you try to build it yourself for the ultimate feeling of accomplishment. Ain't that why we all play KSP at the end of the day? It is the first stage separation that, by the way, burnt RP-1 kerosene as compared to the rest of the rocket that run on liquid hydrogen. Currently before your very eyes is the Apollo flight diagram that I tried to follow as close as I could in KSP-2. And yes, before anyone sees anything, it does look like a penis. However, you are more than welcome to take a screenshot or pause the video. Also a link to full scale version is down in the description. As we are nearing the end of the second stage burn and its separation, I wanna kinda go berserk with my commentary and tell you a story. Some of you may know that, that I'm a university student and I only have few months left out of my senior year and then I'm going for an aerospace engineering degree and I need to fund that and I hope YouTube might be a bit of a helping hand someday, helping me pay my education by essentially letting me give you guys these videos that will get better and better with time. But that's a segue within a segue because this is not what the story is about. So I used to live in a dorm for a year some time ago. I mainly decided it would be a viable option because it was just cheap, plus the location was actually pretty good, as it was the downtown, basically. The major downside, however, was I couldn't park my car anywhere near the building because of paid parking all around. What Smart Jack did was what Smart Jack could have only done and parked the car at the campus located 10 minutes by public transport away. It meant I indeed was saving money on fuel, but in order for me to use the car, I had to first take a tram to get to the campus, get my car, go wherever I needed to go or just get my groceries, drop them off at the dorm, drive back to campus and ride another tram back. But the dorm, right? It surely was pretty good as we live in modern society. <laughs> no, not this one. <laughs> It was, and still is, a very old building from like the 50s or 60s, all concrete inside and out, like 10 stories high, and all the windows would only crack open a small bit, supposedly because people used to jump out in the past. When you walked into the building, that negativity outside the building would only multiply, and the only positive thing about the whole place was people, but not everyone, of course. Like, most of the staff was kind and smiling and stuff, but others, mostly older folks, looked like they wanted to kill you. Now there's me arriving in cold October, so I parked up right at the entrance and carried all my basic stuff like bags, big backpack, you know, the regular things. Then came the time to get my PC in there, so I grabbed it, it was a heavy gaming PC, and I proceeded to walk in. Literally every single person in the lobby stopped what they were doing and looked at me. Judging by the reaction, I can guess I was the only person who, instead of a laptop, brought a freaking gaming PC. I don't know where I'm going with this, I just wanted to share all that. A lot of time has passed and we are plotting our next maneuver and are about to get into an orbit around the moon as we have entered the sphere of influence. Kerbin's satellite approached really fast during that time warp and gave us a little bit of shot of itself. When we have finally captured around and established our orbit, we can lower our perigee and apogee to be somewhere near the 20 km mark. It is just a series of simple retrograde burns that affect our orbit in such a way that we either slow down, as is the case here, or speed up when burning prograde, therefore in simple terms lowering or rising the opposite side of the orbit. This is not orbital mechanics class, so I will limit myself to just that. On that note, would you want me to sometimes upload a video where we could talk about different basic or more advanced areas of, I don't know, space travel, spacecraft, engines, and so on? Also, if, he, if so, what format? Let me know and we might do that. Back to the video where I double checked my fuel tanks just to be sure. 
When you look at the Delta V readout though, some would say we don't have enough fuel. I wasn't sure at that time, but I suspected the readout is incorrect and you're gonna see that I was in fact right for once. As we approach the surface fairly quickly, I'm trying to play with my throttle in a way that wouldn't necessarily burn all of our fuel, but we ended up very inefficient anyway. We are nearing the ground and touchdown that marks the completion of the weekly challenge. Okay, not entirely, as we are required to get back to Kerbin. Let's extend the ladder and disembark our vessel that has nearly tipped over and upon further inspection, it was decided that using our Kerbal's head is the best way to fix it. As the ship is somewhat stable, it is time to take a walk on the moon's surface and plant our flag. Of course, there's plenty of photo opportunities that we are definitely gonna take before and after placing the flag for generations to come. I'm just gonna name it something simple like weekly challenge, especially because there's a strict characters limit, sadly. We got it, the spot is ours forever. A little thumbnail take, not sure I'm gonna use it, but you guys know, it's a magic, I know. Just uh, have a little jump there and we need to head back to the lander cabin. Freeland check is seemingly short and now complete. Let's then start heading back into orbit. I didn't even check where the service module is, but since it's just the man, it doesn't really matter, I feel like. Now I know what you're gonna say, the base of the lander should have stayed on the surface. And I did try that approach, but I mentioned at the beginning what was up. Now that's on your screen at the bottom left hand corner. We ended up uh, with pretty much no fuel, so I was forced to take the whole thing back to rendezvous with the main ship. I could fly the lander manually and dock, but I created a maneuver node just to make sure we have enough Delta V to at least establish an orbit. And again, the node readout as well as staging readout are incorrect or at the very least misleading. I reloaded quick save just there because I overshot the burn and we would have ended up with a much higher apogee than we needed. I felt like we didn't have enough fuel for any corrections. I am now paying much closer attention to Apogee and Perigee, and especially the time to Apogee as well, just burning prograde when we are just a few seconds away. Since we didn't exactly launch at the correct launch window, meaning the ship that we want to dock with being almost directly overhead in this case, we were required to time warp around and make quite a few orbits before we were somewhat set in a good position behind the service module. I was happy with the ships being where they were, and that means we can plot a maneuver node and get our separation as low as possible, but of course we cannot be as accurate, so it is only an approximation, and in the end we just ended up with the good old target retrograde type of approach. Getting both ships near isn't really a challenge, so a tad bit more of time warping did the job, and we can point our lander retrograde and burn until we cancel out any velocity to the target. As you see, the target is pretty close to us, that's 1.6 kilometers away. Now we can point target again, do a little burn, increase our speed, and retrograde again, burn, lose the speed, and so on. It goes like that all the time until we get close enough to see it. So we can time warp around to see a little bit more in the sun, so that you can actually see the docking, and we almost collided both ships and that would have been a catastrophe especially in Kerbal Space Program 2. Now as the time has stopped which is a new function in KSP we were able to point our ships onto each other, target the docking ports and dock pretty easily kind of bumpy at the end and I was a bit afraid that we're gonna break something. Now we can just deorbit the lander by burning its engine since we actually had some more fuel we can now enable the service module engine, plot a maneuver node, and whoops, uh, no orbital lines on the <laughs> maneuver node making, and I had to reload the save again by going back into the menu screen, and it doesn't work again, so I just decided not to bother for another hour trying to fix it. We just ended up burning prograde kinda in the perigee, going into Kerbin orbit, now, I'm just lowering the periapsis to be within the atmosphere of Kerbin, and we're just gonna be aerobraking at this point, since there's no entry heating in this game. Ah, such a nice shot as well, with Kerbals inside. <laughs> and they're smiling, because they don't know they're gonna be re-entering Kerbin at orbital speeds, since, you know, we don't have to worry about re-entry heating. Even though I've placed that heat shield 
on the command module there, but it's just a just a habit, I guess. But now we got the parachutes open. We are heading for the water, and that will conclude the mission. And splash down. And thank you for watching. And see you in the next video.